Hey guys, it's Andrew here. Today we're going to talk about estimating. We're going to talk about assigning labour rates. We're going to assign, uh, talk about the custom estimation tool. We're going to talk about creating custom materials. And if you stick around, you'll probably see some cool new features that we've just added into Plus Design Build. All right, so what I have here is a set of plans. It's uh, some PDFs that I imported basically via uh, our PDF import tool into SketchUp, which is up here. And I've also got a DWG or a vectorized image over top of it and basically makes it a lot easier for me to get accuracy when I do that. And if you do want to see the video on that, check out uh, our Pluspec channel and you'll notice that there is a, a video on there about creating vectorized PDFs into Plus Design Build or SketchUp. Okay, so first things first guys, we're going to talk about assigning labor rates. Now, I'm going to use, in this instance, I'm going to use timber framing because I find in the industry one of the biggest problems uh, is that people are trying to do square meter estimates, which basically means from the floor plan, they're trying to figure out the cost to install the timber framing, cut it, uh, nail it together and put it together on site. And that's almost impossible because if you have a large open space, obviously the builder is going to pay more per square meter than if you had a multitude of internal walls. And sure, you could average it out, but it's never going to be accurate. So I'm going to get into this straight away. So what I've got here is uh, my wall height and a masonry wall type and, and just typical framing, basically. One thing with framing is that uh, in Australia or anywhere around the world, we have different stud spacings. And obviously, it costs more to put studs in per at smaller spacing. So you would choose the spacing you're going to, to, to use, you would choose uh, the timber type that you were going to use and, and anything else that goes with it, that's all inside of the tutorials. But how do we associate labor with that? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly just trace over this plan just a little bit, just to quickly get some ideas of what's going on here. And you know what, I'll, I'll just stop at the internal walls. I won't get too caught up because it's not about tracing over the plan. What this is about is accuracy with our estimates. And let's just go, say, and here. I'm not even going to get that caught in getting accurate with it because, as I said, we're not about tracing. Let's just quickly go around to here and back to here, back to, I'm going to even do a shortcut there, here and here, and bang. Right, you'll notice that it drew the wall according to what I'd actually selected over here. And we have, in Australia, we use these things called nogs, uh, most, uh, and Every single thing that we cut through these walls um, is associated with a price. More importantly, that every single price is associated with a time that we spend on site and in some cases materials. But today we're going to talk about labor. And obviously the more complex the wall gets, the uh, more we should or shouldn't pay depending on you know what it is. So I'm just going to quickly put some windows in here. And obviously it's going to cost more to do that two meters of wall than what it was these level two meters of wall. And, and every single time I put something new in, there's a labor task associated with it. And that includes windows, headers, uh, and everything that's there. So if I did a takeoff right now, I'm going to show you how I go about doing this. Uh, I'm going to quickly just hit my takeoff button. And this is a fresh file. You'll notice on the right over here that we actually have new tags. So I can turn my walls or anything on and off very, very quickly there. Um, so if I just wanted to estimate what I was looking at, I would obviously turn things on and off. Okay, so inside of this uh, estimate here, we've got framing. And inside of the framing, if we click on the drop down, you'll notice that we have the sizes of timber, which are the things that we purchased from a supplier. However, we also have the labor to cut and build frames on site from stick timber and it's come out at an actual dollar figure right down to the cents. And if we go in here and, and I look at, maybe we just go show in model, that way we can see what we're talking about. So you can see that this is what the, the item we're estimating is. And if we go to edit see more, it's got a length of all the timbers. And I can put in my vendors, my hardware suppliers, whoever's gonna do that, but today we're talking about labor. So I'm going to keep on task here. And if I go down the bottom, you've got labor per cut, which means the more complex the job, the more we would pay, the less complex the job, the less we would pay. And that's a benefit for us. And here I have this thing called a recipe. You'll notice I've actually got two because this is a pretty simple job. 
And if it was a more difficult job with rake walls and so on, I would choose a different labour task and I'll quickly get into that in a minute. However, at the moment we have this recipe here cut on site and I'm paying $2.85 a cut. Where did it, how did it know how many cuts? Well, the truth is that Plus Design Build actually goes through and measures every single stick of timber. It gives you a cut and an order length. And complexity comes down to the amount of times we cut, the amount of times we nail them, and the amount of times we stick things together. So the more complex we made the project or the more walls we add, the higher the price is going to go up per cut. Right? So if I actually go down here and I'll just collapse that for a second, this item is linked to the number of cuts. And you can see that I've got six pieces of header, which would go over the top of my windows, and I have 411 studs. And if we add the two together, we have 417 studs. And I can add in a price to cut and nail that together and stand if I want to these frames. As opposed to working on a square meter rate, which would be generate face at the base of walls, I have 197 square meters in there, yet I'm going to pay the same for that 197 square meters I am for all my internal walls, and that's ridiculous. We shouldn't do it. It's a waste of time and money. All right, so as I said before, it's a very simple job, and I don't need to have a difficult job in this particular instance, and therefore the only price I'm going to get through is $1,188.45. I can put my builder's markup or margin on top of that and might say, you know what, on top of the carpenter's price, I'm going to put 25% on top of it, and therefore I'm at $1,485. And I can assign it to a subcontractor. You input all of your subcontractors, uh, and you would go through the import um, section in the main menu. So at the moment, my carpenter is going to, to do this, and I can put that into a purchase order and actually send it straight to my carpenter, along with any other items that we might have in the takeoff. Wall framing, generate, and you'll notice that I now have a purchase order. Uh, if I put my own logo and everything in there and what the job address is, it'll actually have the purchase order according to the carpenter. But you'll notice that we didn't pay the carpenter our margin because that's ours. So this is just the price for the carpenter uh, plus the GST in Australia, or whatever your tax rate is where you are, uh, is actually created a purchase order that we can save and we can send it to zero, or we can save it as a PDF, or we can save it to uh, an Excel spreadsheet with multiple purchase orders across multiple um, spreadsheets. So at the moment, this job is very, very simple, uh, as I mentioned there. If this job started to get more complex, let's just quickly add a little bit of complexity here, and we're going to go in here and go right-click walls, and we're going to split these walls up a little bit. And it's, we'll make it into a job that's kind of, you know, more difficult to do. And we go enter, and and then we're going to push pull these walls around, guys. These all, To learn how to do what I'm doing is inside of all the tutorials inside of our software. But I'm just going to show you something that's really interesting here with this wall. Let's grab it out here. Let's just say we go something like this. With these walls, we've actually decreased the square meters of our project. Quickly have a look at that. Uh, base of base of walls. Now I only have 177 square meters, but I actually have a higher uh, cost, or because I've actually added more timber in, not less. And we might also have some of these walls as gables. So I might say, let's just make these two walls gables for some strange reason. It's adding a, a significant amount of complexity to this job. So gable and we'll quickly put in a pitch at say 45 degrees. Right, that's a significantly more expensive project to, to build. And if I went around and added more complexity as I went, I might change the, the type of takeoff. So if I selected and did a takeoff just of this here, now takeoff selection, and if I go to my framing now, you'll notice that my price has actually changed. My purchase order would also change if I saved it, so we'd have to update the purchase order. But in this case, I can see as, as a, a builder or as a carpenter that this is more complex. So I'm going to go into here and go edit, see more. I'm going to go down to my framing task. I'm going to expand it. Now, what I would do is I could actually just say, right, well, I don't want to exclude this one. I want to exclude the original. And therefore, I've paid the carpenter the difference of the price for a more complex job. 
if it was, you, you might say that we got very easy, we'd have medium, we'd have hard, and we'd have very hard. So you could just simply duplicate the recipe and say, very difficult job, or whatever it is. Uh, and I'm gonna change the rate on this one to say $4.85. And if I did it again and went duplicate recipe, so duplicate this one, and just go maybe medium job, medium complexity. Right, and I'll change the rate on this one to say maybe $3.95, whatever it is. My point is, is that now I can choose multiple types of complexity on a project that's very, very accurate to ensure that I'm paying my subcontractors the right rate. Right, so just deselect what it is and therefore I'm using a difficult job with cut at $3.85 a cut and I have accuracy out the door. Guys, uh, I'm going to uh, just continue on with this in the next video I'm going to talk about the custom estimation tool and we're going to quickly talk about how we go about, uh, just go and see all here, how we go about working on things that are difficult to model. For instance, this project runs down the side of a hill. So check out the next video guys uh, and I'm going to show you how to go about very, very quickly getting an estimate on difficult sites so that you can get more done in less time, get your quotes more accurate, win more jobs, happier clients. All right, guys, if you like the video, push like. If you dislike the video, push dislike. If there's something you need to know, ask the question below and we'll do our best to help you out. Cheers.